So several years ago, I was invited to a paint night. Illustrations by Pete. Now, I didn't want to paint with acrylic paint at the time. I was really getting into watercolor paint, and I had them with me, and I thought, why can't I paint on a gessoed canvas? So I did it, and I'll show you that picture here. And it was okay. It was fun. It was at someone's house. It wasn't at a place. And I got some pretty cool texture with it, and I thought, this might be interesting. So then I heard about... Frederick's canvas they put out a watercolor canvas and I was gonna get one but I never did I always I just I didn't understand why would I get a canvas for watercolor when I can just use paper that's what it's for it comes out the best on paper why would I do that but every time I go into any kind of art store I see these watercolor canvases and I'm drawn to them I want to try them maybe I can do something a little different maybe I can just play around with it, get a better result. So, I was at Hobby Lobby. They, they have the Master's Touch, that's their store brand. I know it's cheap, and it's very, I'm gonna point out some things, it's very difficult to use, but I'm gonna, it's not much different than any other canvas, cause it's just gesso on it, it doesn't matter. But I'll point out some good things and some bad things. I did really enjoy using it, it just, it doesn't work the way you would expect to paint with watercolor. You have to change your whole approach on this. But I also want to mention I get frustrated sometimes with YouTube, but it's not really their fault. I'm a difficult read for them. They, Their algorithm struggles a little bit. Okay, everybody, so we have a new channel coming up. It's an art channel. Looks like it's a top-down art channel. And, no, wait a second. He's vlogging. We, we have a vlogging top-down art channel he's talking about his mother went to medical school to be a nurse we have some kind of medical school top-down art show coming up here wait he's taking their slow motion pictures of birds we have a wildlife with medical top-down it's art he's talking about his friend who used to chase frogs so definitely with the wildlife i think that's where we have to go with this we have he's publishing another video this he's just he's just walking around in circles i don't think he's really doing anything to do with art he's talking about something else he's looking at his shoes or something like that there's some weird colors in the sky maybe he's oh there he goes with the art we have the art again he's gonna i i don't know we have the top-down vlogging art medical school with the wildlife. Uh, we, we don't have an audience for this, do we? We, we don't have anybody that that's not a thing, right? Am, am I missing something? We, we, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand what's happening here. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, no, we, we don't have it. He's publishing another video. Okay, stop everything. Shut off his channel. Don't show anyone anything he's talking about. We got to figure this out first. I get it. Okay, so these watercolor canvases, I, like I said, I walk through the store. I see them all the time and I want to get them. The thing that stops me is, you know, watercolor is, the watercolor paper has sizing on it. And that sizing makes it so that the color sits on top of the paper and doesn't get sucked into the paper so that it's, it looks bright and vibrant. But at the same time, the water does get sucked into the paper and absorbs a little bit and embeds in the surface of the paper just a little bit. So the color is permanent, it's fixed in there. With gesso, it sits on, everything sits on top. You have to wait longer for it to dry. You have to wait for that water to just kind of evaporate. It doesn't really get into the canvas at all so when you put down a layer it looks a little washed out and if you go to put a second layer on it will lift immediately there's nothing even staining colors lift immediately because there's nothing going into the canvas so you have to approach it slightly differently now when i had that other that paint night it was really cool the way that you could develop different textures in the paint this time I used a little bit of gouache which helped me even more. I was able to mold some textures even more because gouache, that just sits on top of the page anyway. You can mold it and shape it the way you want. It's a little bit different than watercolor. 
it's not just in in my opinion it, it paints completely different than watercolor it's not just a thicker or a, uh, a a chalkier medium it actually paints completely different and when you go back on top of gouache you expect it to move a little bit watercolor can stay put if you're gentle with your glazes but not with gouache gouache pretty much will move with your paintbrush it's just it, it, as soon as you reintroduce water, it moves a little bit. So it's it helped me to paint on here using the watercolor, getting the texture that I wanted, and then using gouache to kind of mold how everything was going to look. And I think it came out really well. I really enjoyed this, but it's difficult to recommend it to someone unless what you're going for is something completely different because that's what this was. It wasn't the norm. It wasn't, oh yeah, okay, you're a watercolorist. Here, try this on canvas. It's not the same thing. Don't expect it to act the same way. It's very, you'll see how I struggle with this and I put color on there and it just, it, it just moves. It's, it stays there uh, like in a puddle and then as soon as I go to touch it again, it moves again. So that's, you have to understand that going in. However, if you learn to do this, if you try this, and you really get that out of the way you understand that I think this can be very rewarding for abstract art because you can get a lot of different texture that maybe you wouldn't get on paper because that paint kind of sit, sucks down into that and sits there in the paper a little bit more but with this you can mold it and sculpt it so I think with abstract stuff you can get a little bit more texture it's just a little bit nicer now this is just my opinion of this I don't know if I'm ever going to do this again. I don't know if I ever want to do this again. I probably will because I, anything that is experimental and fun to play around with is something that I'm into with art. So I like to do this. I'll probably do it again. I don't know if I'm going to do this in the near future or just a further down the line sometime when I have some time, I'll, I'll try this again. I might do a small series of these, maybe like three or four more paintings, but it really depends. If, if this is something that people like to look at, I'll probably do a few more of them. I know most of you just, you don't even care what I'm doing most of the time. You just flip it on and listen to what I'm rambling about and laughing at me. It's okay. I laugh at me too. And you can follow along just fine. This is, this is good. This is fun. And I, I do enjoy that. I, I like doing different things that other people aren't doing. So this is something that is no one else is really using these. And most watercolor artists, when they come across these canvases, they say the same thing. It's always, oh, it's not the same as paper. Oh, it'll never work the way that paper does. And it's not supposed to. It's designed for that watercolor to sit on top and for you to sculpt it and mold it. I would never try and do something realistic on this. It just, I, for me, it would not work. You can't layer over the top with, with different uh, like shadows and add dimension to it unless you're going to introduce gouache. Just watercolor, I don't think it works out very well. But that's just me. Maybe you can find a way to, for that to work for you. If you're going to do something more realistic, I am not. I'm going to use this stuff for abstract stuff. That's what I'm going to stick with. Okay, so I know some of you don't like to hear about the whole YouTube algorithm-y thing. Here's the thing. I'm just going to get this off my chest. I think it's strange, and I think everybody's lying when they talk about it, because let, I'm just going to use some easy numbers here, just so that you can relate to the actual whole numbers and just whatever so let's say i have a no my number one video gets a hundred views a day and then my number two will get 50 views a day and number three about 25 and then the others will go down from there so i mean roughly half and half that's usually how they run for one two and three so here's the thing when i have another video that takes over as number one like when i release a new video and that one gets a lot of views immediately then my number one that was there drops down to that 50 spot now i want to know why yesterday it was getting 100 views but because i have a new view uh, video that's getting 100 views this one now drops down to 50 and it takes that second place so there's something actually happening here that YouTube is deciding, okay, your channel is only going to get this many views 
in this amount of time and then we're going to portion it out for you so that if you get one that starts taking over or if I have an old video that all of a sudden gets a lot of views and jumps up that top one gets knocked down my number one video for a very long time was getting a, a large number of views and that was that automatic drawing versus the abstract drawing I've mentioned that before now it's like number two and the um, how to abstract doodle it, that's number one now and as soon as it took over it it went to the same level that the other one did and the other one dropped down to the level that that was it's very strange it's it's like it's planned that way like it has to work out that way and I don't know if that's true I'm just this is just my experience the other thing I notice is and here's something I don't get because you hear all these people say well you know if you're doing really well then YouTube will push your videos if people are watching them more or whatever uh, that's not necessarily true either because I can have a video that does really well, has more click-through rate, has higher view duration, the average view duration is way up, and it's getting subscribers, and there's a lot of comments on it, and a lot of interaction, and it drops off just like every other video. It never really, it's not like, oh, okay, this is really good, so they're going to push it to more people. That never happens. It's always... Nope, we're going to, okay, it's it's Wednesday now, we're cutting off that new video, we're not going to really show that to that many people after that point. And they do that, that's, that's something that happens, usually have a really good, right around Sunday it starts to pick up views a little bit, and then my Monday video comes out, it goes crazy, drops back down a little bit on Tuesday, but stays pretty steady. Wednesday comes, drops down, to, it's like they shut off my channel, it's, it's it, okay, we're done with him. Just cut it off, and we're not going to show many more videos of his this week. And then Thursday's low, and then Friday picks up a little bit. Saturday picks up a little bit sometimes, and Sunday is when it starts again. So it's like a curve that it just, it's a repeating curve. I can see it every week. It's the same thing. And, you can, and I can understand maybe people are not online as much watching those videos, you know, those different days of the week. But if I look at again my analytics will tell me the people who watch my videos are online on Thursday and Wednesday and they're they're watching videos like crazy but not mine so I think it depends YouTube is a little bit hesitant because they want you to have you know a little bit more of a following before they invest their time in you and that kind of thing and I get that it's a business I understand that and I'm just happy that I get to enjoy this process with you and we can have fun here and the people who do watch the videos very interactive um, most of the people will say something or like something or even get in touch with me off of YouTube and that is the perfect segue into the next thing that I want to say so I don't understand all these messaging apps because I have people who hold multiple conversations over multiple apps and sometimes the same conversation over multiple I have to go to my messenger and then Facebook messenger and then sometimes Instagram and then sometimes other there's I have like six of them I don't even know all the different apps that people are trying to talk to me and many times it's the same people and they, they start the conversation on one app and then move over to another app. Can you please, just someone, let me know, why do we do this? Why does this happen? Now, sometimes it happens organically, uh, especially on here. This, this is something where there are several of you who contact me on Instagram as well. And it may be something that you don't want to put in a comment on YouTube. Even if we've started a conversation on YouTube and it just turns into something else a different kind of conversation we move that over to I get that that's I understand that but when you're talking to someone personally that you know and they're already text messaging you where no one else can see it and then they move over to WhatsApp and then they move over to Facebook Messenger it to kind of have the same conversation they just oh yeah okay well this app I can't show you a picture so I got to send a picture on this app and then I can show you a picture on that app and we can comment it over on this third app and I just I don't get it it drives me nuts I want to take my phone and throw it through a wall I just I don't like that I, I almost don't talk to anyone anyway and I have six apps that I'm talking to people on all the time the same people 
it drives me a little nuts. I have to admit that. I don't understand. My brother, I love my brother Matthew very much. He is switches apps like the day. Every day he's switching new apps. I think I've talked to him on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe eight different apps that I've talked to. And I, as soon as, and sometimes it's only him that's on that app. So as soon as he stops using that, I throw it out. That's it. We're done. But he does that a lot. He's got me sucked into this new one. I don't even remember what it's called. I have to look it up here. Let me see. Telegram. It's called Telegram. He likes that Telegram one. So we were on Discord with him. Now I'm on Telegram and my sister joins in and other, you know, it's just, it, I don't understand. I don't want to keep switching and I keep having to put more apps on my phone just to talk to the same people I'm talking to on the other apps. It's weird. Very strange. Okay, so another weird thing, and this is going to, I know this is getting a little yelly again. I, I tend to do that sometimes. I apologize, but I've got, this one irks the crap out of me. I don't understand this more than I don't understand the app thing. So at, I'm not an advocate for doing anything that you don't want to do. But if you eat at McDonald's or if you think everyone, you know, deserves to drive into a brick wall if they eat at McDonald's, there are some weird people who condemn you just because of the food you eat. That's just how people are. So if, if they can kind of single you out for some reason and, and kind of make you seem like you're bad because of something, they will. So anyway... If you ever go to McDonald's or if you are working at McDonald's or if you know someone who does, and this is not a negative thing against that, someone's got to work there. I, you know, we need to get our food a certain way and there's nothing wrong with that. So, and I, I can't understand the fast food thing because I would never want to work around fast food. I did, when I was younger, I did work as a busboy in a Chinese restaurant for a while and it was uh, like an all you can eat buffet. And it was eye-opening. I, I, it's hard to eat there. Anyway, so if you know someone who works there, just I want to know this. Why is it when you order, let's say you have a regular order. You're ordering for four or five people and you're placing a big order. And then at the end, you're like, you know, on the way home, I could use an ice cream cone. And you, they give you the ice cream cone first at the window. You have, you don't only have a couple hands. It'd be nice if they gave you the bag and you could put that down and then they give you the drink, you could put it in the cup holder and then they give you the ice cream cone. But no, every time they give you the ice cream cone and then try and hand you everything else. Now, if you have two ice cream cones because you're getting one for someone else and you get them and now they're trying to hand you bag, how does this work? Why don't they just wait a second just give me the other stuff and then the ice cream cone. That's how you should do anything. Every pl I know it's because the person at the cashier there turns around and just gets the ice cream cone. They do it for you or whatever. But d wait, just hold on a second. Give me the other stuff. I'll wait another second for you to get that ice cream cone. It's okay. I can hang out for a minute. The person behind me won't even notice. Just do that. Then give me the ice cream cone. I don't understand why. It irritates the crap out of me. I always spill something dripping on my hand or the steering wheel. or something. New car steering wheel just has ice cream on it. It just always happens. It doesn't matter. So, and I don't want to pay for the insurance when I rent a car and it has ice cream on it. So just please give me the ice cream cone later. Well, I really hope you learned a lot while we were talking about McDonald's ice cream cones and, you know, messaging apps and things like that. But... Anyway, to get back to this, I hope you try it. it. It did come out. It was a little bit duller than I imagined it to be, but not as dull as it has been on many different papers. Canson Montval is one of the worst papers ever. I just wanted to work that into the conversation. I hate that. I would rather paint on the canvas than on that paper. That paper is terrible, and, and some people like it. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm not trying to insult. If you like it, I'm not trying to insult that because it's the thing you like. I just, I can't work with it. It, it bothers me. The paint looks dull on it. Anyway, I've talked about this before. But this is actually not that bad. It does kind of, it challenges you. You have to think differently. You have to think, okay, 
I'm not trying to paint something neat and crisp and clean. I'm trying to paint something with texture. It has to have texture to look anywhere decent on this paper. And if you throw a little bit of gouache in there, it's gonna help you. It'll definitely help you paint on this with watercolor. You add a little bit of gouache, it gives it some texture. Hopefully you see that here. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something like the video. If you would rather get that ice cream cone and be a jerk and toss it back, don't ever do that. But you want to. I'm not saying you should. You want to throw that ice cream cone back at them for handing it to you first when you have your hands are full now and you have to take their stuff. Anyway, that's about it for me and I'll see you in the next one.